This is the Broccoli Pod. I'm Augie Dupre. I'm Capital J. I'm little Nikki P. Hell yeah. Hey. Tight. Tell us a little bit about what you do, bro. Um, so basically I'm an artist, engineer, kind of just overall creative. Um I dabble into a little bit of everything, sewing, painting. Sewing? Sewing. <laughs> yeah, I'd be I'd be fucking around with the sewing and like the clothing design. Okay, nice, I fuck with that. Yeah. Yeah, so pretty much just my like my main thing is kinda like just artistry in general. Um yeah, just make music. Uh, I'm from Reading, but I now reside in San Diego. Yeah. Thanks for coming all this way, by the way, for the show. Just for the of podcast. Of course. Literally. Oh, yeah. I mean, for the podcast. Yeah. The, yeah. This is the show I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you guys paid handsomely, so yeah. you got to fuck with yeah. That's yeah. right, bro. That's right. It was expensive. <laughs> yeah. Really? How, was, how was the show last night, bro? Uh, It was... That shit was actually so surprisingly lit. Like, (laughs) I didn't expect that many people to actually show up. Yo, honestly, same. (laughs) No, like, that shit was... Yeah, no, that shit was... It was pretty popping, bro. I was definitely surprised with the turnout, for sure. And it was a pretty active crowd, too. Yeah, the the crowd was most definitely pretty active. Um, Yeah, everyone was just, like, just having a good time, it looked like. Because, I mean... You know, everyone was there. Everyone looked like they were enjoying it. Yeah. It was overall cool, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was a good show, really. I had a good time, for sure. Yeah, like 60 people at least were there. So, it's pretty solid. Ooh, for, yeah. For, yeah, I think we looked at the ticket sales. It was okay. like pretty close to that. And that small of a... I mean, it's not too like small people, of a yeah. building, but mm-hmm. it felt like the energy was like good. Yeah, the energy was definitely there. So, why'd you move out to San Diego? Um, so pretty much, I I wanted to get out of Reading just to expand, and San Diego's just always been a place that's on my mind. I was like, you know what, maybe not LA, I'll go further south, San Diego. Yeah, San Diego's at least a little less chaotic. It's also way nicer. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) most definitely on both ends, but it, it is pricey, but, um, you know, you can work with it. Yeah. Yeah, what you doing out there? So pretty much, I'm just artist full-time out there right now yeah how long yeah. you been out there uh i've been out there since september okay okay pretty fresh nice okay that's yeah. what's up so four months five months where we are right now february yeah something like that and you're you said you're a full-time artist down there mm-hmm. damn bro so like what 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 you be doing down there like what day do you day? make your money from yeah um so i have a clothing brand um you can plug it if you want. Yeah, it's Players Club Records. It's a clothing brand as well. So. Okay. Tight. It's a, it's just Players Club in general, and then you know we have the record company, and then a clothing line, and then Beats Collective, stuff like that. Nice. Just kind of dabbling in whatever. Yeah, and then um, mix and mastering, um, beats. Sometimes also features. Uh, and yeah, yeah, but I pretty much do a lot of clothing stuff. So like on the clothing apps and stuff, I just be pushing the merch or like Fire. thrifting and stuff and reselling. Okay, nice. So you really just be out there like grinding. Mm-hmm. Hustling right yeah, now. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the way. Yeah, I mean, like being in Reading, you're not used to that type of mindset where you have to grind like that because it is so cheap here. Mm-hmm. Um, Down there, it's like it's $200 just to park your car for the month. Jesus Christ. So no you can worry. imagine, like, the first thing I think about when I wake up is, like, what is a move? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that's a really great mindset to be in, though. You've only been down there sub- since September, and I'm sure that's really affected, like, how you go about just your everyday life. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. and yourself as a person. That, like, sink or swim mentality mm-hmm. that you have to develop. Oh, got, yeah. Gotta find some way to get your cheesecake. Most definitely. Yeah. Um... Yes, there was a question that I had that just escaped my mind. <laughs> yeah, no, but, uh, yeah, living down there is it's it's really cool. Um, I just turned twenty one and stuff, so you've been hitting the clubs. I haven't. I haven't <laughs> even been to a bar yet, but um, you know, I'll make I'll make I'll make my way there one time. 
Yeah, make your You're appearance. You're not missing out, bro. Everybody's still going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still walk by it every single day. So, I mean, I just, I see people in there and stuff, but. Honestly, yeah. until you're, like, really getting it, especially down in San Diego, it's just a money pit. Yeah, no. Yeah, th- yeah. that's what I was saying. I was like, you know. Wasting like, that 200. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's when that you could parking. be parking. Yeah, when, when you could, could be parking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what, what do you pay for rent? Uh, it is two thousand for a studio. Oh, fuck, dude! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. God damn. You got a music studio down there that you're um, that you work at, or so I work at a studio in LA, and then I work uh out of my my house. Yeah, and then um got the setup. Got the little setup. I don't really like. I don't record anyone there, obviously. Um. Just because I can't be loud and stuff, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just, if I see a studio and stuff around town, I'll tap in. I'm part of the Audio Engineering Society in San Diego, so. So, what is, what is that? So, basically, um, I go to college down there, and what it is, it's like, it's a, there's a music club, and then there's the Audio Engineering Society, so. They have a couple studios that they're, you know, using and they get access to. And pretty much they'll just meet up with people and, you know, talk music, talk engineering, just a whole bunch of nerdy stuff. I mean, that's a really good vibe to be around if you're really trying to, you know, take the music thing far. Yeah. Surround yourself with those kind of people. Facts. What, what school do you go to? Uh, I go to San Diego City. Okay. Nice. So, uh, my music club, uh, like the... One of the, like, the leaders in the music club is actually Juice World's engineer. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and Kodak oh, Black, kind of... he said. That's and I tough. was like, whoa. And I just met him, like, like last Friday. Oh, yeah, last Friday, I really... I met him a couple Fridays ago, but I didn't really, like, you know, get yeah, to know him. Get, yeah. Until I, like, started to get to know him. We were in the studio, and we're just, like, looking at equipment. I was like, what's your go-to, like, vocal chain? What's your go-to plugins? Stuff like that. He was giving me some sauce. And uh, nice. I was like, so who have you like recorded any big names? He was like, uh, you heard of Juice World? I was like, bro. Yeah, drop the, you heard of Juice World? Yeah, yeah bro. You I've know who of, Drake I've, is? I've heard of Juice World. Yeah, yeah man. I, I do know who Drake is. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's actually. That's why I have heard of that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know if I've heard any music, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I might have seen him on some commercials. And stuff. Yeah, you said, you said Taylor Swift. <laughs> Doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> Damn, you got so you just dropped a single recently, right? Uh, or yeah, a music video. Yeah, your music video. Yeah, yeah uh, that was a that was a single, but it was also part of a project, which is the new project that I just dropped, um, like a, almost a month ago today. And that's called Intervention. Nice. Are, are you working on another one right now? You got another project in the works? Are you... Uh, I do and kind of don't. Ear. Like, I'm kind of just playing it by ear. Like, I kind of just... I didn't even throw that up onto all platforms. It's just on YouTube and SoundCloud. Just to keep it simple and direct the followers to, like, just two places. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, if you're not using SoundCloud, you're using YouTube. And I feel like the communities on those apps are a little more, like, tight-knit mm-hmm. than overall just seeing it on Spotify. Or that's fair. Right. So, like, yeah, you could really build a community off of it. And then you can comment on stuff, too. So I'll, I'll be reading the comments and stuff. Has that kind of been your focus, is, like, interacting in building, like, a small community right yes, now? Yes, community is everything. Because, like, relationships is what, you know, builds the brand, builds your name, builds wealth. Yeah. So, yeah, it's all it's really all about the relationships. So, you try to make like a like a small community, you know, tight knit, um keep people updated, you know, make some people part of your team and f- go from there, you know. Yeah, building a relationship through your music, I do definitely agree that is a super solid way of getting like like those diehard fans, the people that really are fucking with you since day one. Yeah, no facts. Sure. That yeah, no that's that's definitely um key. Uh, just the other day, I hopped on someone's live, and uh, he knows who he is. Uh, he he might be listening, but like 
he was on his live, and I seen in the background that he had one of my original tees. Hey, hey so I was like, bro, that's crazy. That was is, cool, is, bro. Is this tee right here? We got on. Oh, that's, oh that's fire, bro. So yeah. I was like, oh, it's old school. That shit looks sick up there. There's yeah. a lot going on there. What? What? Okay, explain the T-shirt. Yeah, let's, let's go. All right. So this was a. It was gonna be a project. It was gonna be like my first project, but was that gonna be like an album cover? Yeah. Or, okay. But it was back when I was still like kind of new in music. Um, I had a really good like graphic designer make it, and so. I just told him what I wanted. I was like, yeah, have me, like, running up a road, like, demon chasing behind me, and, you know, upstairs to heaven, run from reality, you know, running from, mm. you know, just harsh reality. Yeah, it looks like a Uzi Vert cover. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> for real. It does. It <laughs> hella looks like a, like a Uzi Vert cover. Yeah, no, it kind of does. And Uzi is a kind of he's a big inspiration for the artwork because he actually has like some of the coolest artwork that's like on cover arts. Like usually when I see cover arts, like sometimes they'll be boring, like just black and white. Mm. But uh, usually Uzi has like his shit on point. The cartoon. Mm-hmm. He has like an animation, like a. Oh yeah, that that, that is something animation. that's really cool too. Like that some artists do It's like they have their own animation style and they mm-hmm. keep it like I don't know if you ever listened to uh, Ghost Man. Um, is he part of uh, a a group of people? No, he he's kind of similar to like Suicide Boys. Okay, yeah, I thought he was in Suicide Boys, but yeah, no, yeah. So in all of his videos, he has like the same like old style eighties animation, okay. but just telling different stories, and it's like his thing. Oh, I've always cool. thought that is like super cool because it's just something that you can always build off of. Yeah, you know what I mean. No, well, he has all those like animation stuff, and he also like he does that on all of his cars and shit too. Oh yeah, I've, really? I've seen the um, the, he's like big into anime, so he like I seen like he had like a R eight or something Audi that uh-huh. had like a wrap on it, but all of his cars are wrapped. Yeah. And uh, raps, actually, they help you with your business because, for one, they're marketing. Mm-hmm. And for two, they're a business write-off because it's advertisement. Oh, that's actually, it's, like, super smart. So no, it's almost like... F- anime shit. Yeah. <laughs> like even, and stuff. yeah, even if it's anime, if it's eye-catching, it's, a, it's an advertisement. So you could write it off on taxes. And, you know, when you're making that much money, it's like you're getting a free uh, rap. Almost, yeah, because you'll get it back at the end of the year. Not, you won't get it back, but you know you won't have to pay. It. Yeah, you yeah. get some. You get most of it. That's most tough. Definitely. So what's what's kind of like the vision with your music? Do you have like a vision, like where you want to go, or are you just still kind of also playing that, like trying to figure that out right now? Uh, I am playing it kind of by ear, but at the same time, I kind of have an overall vision. Um. For one, you know, obviously you want to be rocking big shows, mm-hmm. big venues. Um, the brand, I was thinking about maybe wanting to go like kind of corporate with the brand and maybe partner with like a big company. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a Yeezy type Almost thing. Almost like Yeezy Gap type thing. But at the same time, I don't want to end up in a situation where if you're being the creative lead for something... You're not getting a hundred percent, and yeah, their brand, you know, it obviously helps with sales and stuff. But if you're creatively taking over it, I say, do that yourself. Yo, in my opinion, I think it's like uh, if you want to go like really fast, sure, like sell half your shit and give it away, but like you're definitely not gonna go as far as if you were to do it really slow because you can't if your shit's like really good. People are going to come and get it eventually. Mm-hmm. So if you were patient enough, and that's like active, aggressive patience, you know, where you're oh, yeah. you're selling your shit, you're trying, but you're being patient and not teaming with something that's mm-hmm. not right for you, then you can actually retain control and end up going way farther, especially in today's market. You don't even have to wait as long. Oh, that's, no, that's 100% true, Jay. Uh, have you heard of Desto Dub? No. Awful lot of cough syrup? That brand? Uh-uh. Okay, so uh, pretty much he's a clothing designer and artist in L.A. And 
he runs a brand called Awful Lot of Cough Syrup. I think he got arrested or something, and the cop, he was on Cops on the show, <laughs> and he got arrested, and the cop was like, that's an awful lot of cough syrup. You must be really sick. And so he turned <laughs> that into a trademark. Oh, that's you know, tight. Like, and so Dude. he got the biggest brand in rap right now. Like, and oh, he's retaining damn. 100%. That's dope. I didn't There's even... no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah, I never, right. I never realized that. That's sick. Yeah, no, and it sells, like, you'll see it, like, on people, like, in music videos, and you'll see it everywhere. Like, once you, once I guys, once I told you guys about it, you'll... you'll Pay attention, yeah, I'll start looking, it, bro. But, yeah, that's, like, the goal, just to have something you're creatively leading, and then, cre- like, expanding on. That's dope. Did you, uh... Oh, shit. Um, were you going to build these, like, shows? Are you still doing more shows, like, trying to set them up, like, with Davey? Or was this, like, the first one that you did? Uh, this is the first show I set up with Davey. Uh, and so far, it went really good, so we're going to set up a bunch more. We have, um, we started off with just setting up two, uh, the Hangar Hangout, and then... Which is on March 10th. Be there. Or be square. Don't yeah. be square. Don't Fuck be square. You. We were going to call it the warehouse one, but, but we decided on hang or hang out. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> we set both those up because we're like, you know, the Reading scene is really dry right now. Got a burp. <laughs> <laughs> the Reading scene is really dry right now, so let's kind of stir something up, get people together, start, you know, inspiring. Making this like a thing, a normal mm-hmm. thing yeah. for everybody to do. A normal thing, because like, I don't know if you guys noticed about the crowd, but the crowd last night, it yes, it was packed, but they were kind of like a little stiff. Like they were mm-hmm. kind of just like they were there, just kind of seeing what's up. Yeah, yeah. It's like they had we had to get them used to it and get them comfortable. But mm-hmm. I think the next show that those people were at, they're probably gonna go to the next show, mm-hmm. and they'll be a lot more loose, a lot more. Yeah, and actually, what's funny is I have been to a lot of the shows here because okay. I mean. I do some DJing for Augie, and, you know, we're doing all the shows and stuff. Um, so I've seen them go from, like, some of them are really small where it's, like, a few people, but uh-huh. those people have been coming to each one, and now oh, it's yeah. starting to get, like, more full. And then, you know, people weren't moving at all at the first ones, and then those start those people started moving, and those are the people that are moving now yeah. where everybody else is still kind of stiff. And eventually, like you said, in a show or two or three shows, those people who all came to this one will see and they'll start being that crowd, you know? Yeah. It's really cool seeing the whole thing progress. Yeah. You know, because like he was saying, like the first couple shows were just like kind of small. Like it was mostly just our friends that knew about it. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, I don't know any of these people yeah, I didn't that know are here. Any of those people that were yeah, I, I didn't recognize any, like h- hardly any faces, but, uh, like, I think the most important part is probably for, like, like us as show builders to keep it consistent. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, there's one show, oh, this was cool. Oh, when's the next? Yeah, like mm-hmm. next year or whatever, yeah, or in so a couple months. I think the wait time has to be shortened a little bit. But I think we have a good length in time. You know, the next one's on the 10th. Mm-hmm. So it's a good wait in time to not, like, promote two shows together because then if you promote two together they're gonna be like oh wait i'll just go to this one or i'll just go to this Mm -hmm. one but if it's a little separate more apart then they're more inclined to just go to both yeah i'd agree like like once a month or like maybe twice a month Mm -hmm. type deal definitely and then like promoting how do you how do you like to promote things like shows and yourself and all that like what's your marketing strategy do you have one um Yes, and t- but until um, I'm seeing like consistent like maximum income off of artistry, I don't run any ads. Um, I have in the past, but it's really important that if you're running ads, you need to like be ready for the back end sure. type shit. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I've talked about that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> ads are like they're hit and miss. So like. If you want to do them, you honestly have to go big on them, like spend like a thousand dollars on just one ad, mm-hmm. and 
And you got to have, like, your album drop or something, Mm -hmm. like, big where people can actually interact with it. Yeah. No, it has to be something people can interact with. You can't really promote just, like, a studio session blog or anything Mm -hmm. because, like, people will scroll past it. But, like, if it's something that can actively, you can convert them to actively click on, Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, okay, I can click and listen to it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Then, you know, it'll be useful. Definitely. Well, I, I think what he also meant, not just advertising, like click mm-hmm. ads or anything, but like uh, your branding strategy, like, are, like, what are you doing? Like, as far as like TikTok or Instagram, you know, whatever. Um, or so, are you not really active on that and you're trying to build your back end right now? Uh, both. Cause I would so, understand that. Yeah. So, so pretty much I do, tic- I do TikToks here and there just to like catch up with people, just to let people know what's out. But right now. I kind of let my music just spread by word of mouth, and um, I have been on, like, a couple blogs and stuff, and those help for sure. Like, I've gotten some fans off blogs and features, like, mm-hmm. off blogs, but uh, for the most part, it's, I want to keep it kind of, like, secluded, so, like, if you're tapped in, you're tapped in, and you're like, okay, this is, he's next. Going though. back to, like, building the fan base. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I kind of just... Work on, I'm working on the back end still because, I mean, it's such a long journey mm-hmm. that you can't really you can't really rush it. So, like, if you're rushing yeah. it, it's not going to last long. If you build up the back end really good, then it's going to it's gonna take off. You know what they say? If it's fast, it don't last. If it's slow, it's for show. Ew, yeah. Turn on one race. <laughs> <laughs> the rabbit had to stop and eat some food. <laughs> Took a that nap, damn think, fast right? ass metabolism, yeah. bro. Just gotta yeah. eat. <laughs> gotta eat. Big dogs gotta eat. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah, for marketing, I really just let people like see my personality, and if they fuck with my personality, and if they feel like you know they're similar to me, then those are the core fan base I want to build up before I just go throwing money on ads yeah yeah that's totally people. understandable well, let's talk about clothes bro clothes yeah what's the that's inspiration for clothes yeah, bro? how'd you get into that shit um so pretty much ever since i was like a little kid dude i was always making clothes because like I oh didn't, shit i didn't want to be like the same as everyone else i think so didn't want to wear the same things and stuff like that either yeah and the the point is like uh when I was in school and stuff, I didn't have money for, like, my parents didn't have, like, that good of money to buy, like, brand new clothes. So, we would just go to the thrift store. And, um, I mean, I still go to the thrift store to this day because, mm-hmm. like, you can find really good stuff. And people Deals that don't the go there. Are. Yeah, people that don't go there are sleeping. So, uh. Heavy. <laughs> slacking. But sometimes, like, back then, kids' clothing was just hard to find anything good at the thrift store. Mm. So you gotta like you gotta make the best of it. So I was yeah. like I was just getting black tees, and you know cutting out like you know how you would cut out a snowflake mm-hmm. on paper. I would cut it out with the tee, and then I would wear a white tee under. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that's dope. It, it would like it would be like a snowflake, but like it would just be two layers. Oh, that's actually like, like a really that. good idea. Yeah, that's it. Um, and then from there, I mean, it progressed on. I was in like a sewing class. I was in a couple sewing classes throughout school, one in elementary school, uh, another in high school, and I just, like, you know, I kind of found it useful. It was just like, okay, I can really just, I don't even have to go to the store to yeah. buy anything. <laughs> I can make it right here. Do you make your own patterns and stuff? Uh, yeah, I make my own patterns. Um, I just made in my first pair of jeans, like, a month ago. Did you sew that little little Nikki P on your hat last night? Oh yeah, that was, no, yeah, that was embroidered. Okay, that that looked really good. Thank you. Yeah, that was just a little embroider. Um, but yeah, clothes for me, they were kind of more of an inspiration before music, because you know, in like world, you're in a big world, you're trying to fit in, but you're also trying to stand out. Mm. So you know, you have to make the best when you don't have money and stuff. So. Yo, that's when you make the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's when you make the best, bro. Because you can buy everybody else's stuff. But honestly, mm-hmm. dude, like, sometimes I'm super cheap, you know? But, like, with some things, you know? Yeah. And it's, like, clothes especially. I'm like, dude, 
I do not want to just like pay forty dollars for a shirt. That's crazy. Nope. Facts. That blows my mind that people do that shit. No so, facts. And it's like make your own stuff or. Oh yeah, and because there's people still out there that are blowing that on clothes, like you might as well just make your own and then have them, you know, blow it on your clothes. Exactly. <laughs> And, you know, it's going straight to you, and you can support them back. It's also cheaper for yourself. Exactly. Plus, I like my own shit. Uh-huh. You know, I, mean, I like the stuff I come up with. Yeah. And you'll find more exclusive stuff than just going to the Nike outlet or mm-hmm. something like that. Um, like, this shirt, this was like, I got this shirt at Joann's, and then I just had this ironed on. So, it's just like a direct, direct transfer, heat transfer. Yeah. And, uh... Like, this is not, like, the best quality that you mm-hmm. can get. You can obviously get way better. But it was just a cheap one because this was the first drop drop I actually had. Yeah. Are you screen printing now? Or are you still doing uh, uh, the shirt yes. press? So, screen, the next hoodies that I got dropping, um, they're still in production right now, like, as we speak. Um, and they're screen printed, and they have vinyl, which is not this, but it's, like, kind of a rubber material yeah. the hood. And they have, like, sewn-on tags. Oh, nice. Do you right. got, like, a picture of those? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, pull that up, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see this one. You got a, you got a store? An online store? Uh, yes. It'll be oh. dropping soon, but... The store's not up yet? The store's not up yet. Oh, that's they sick. drop. Nice. It's just, like, a skull hand. Oops. Skull hand. Holding like your heart because your heart's like right there. Mm. Do not nice. play with my heart. Okay. Oh, nice. Child's play. And then child's play on the front. And blue, red, and black. Yeah, I thought about that. That's cool, bro. We'll be tight, bro. We'll get a picture of that up on the, yeah. on the pod for sure. Uh, send that. Yeah, send oh, that. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, send that to one of us and we'll put it up here. Gotcha, gotcha. And then... Uh, when is your website going to be up, your store? Um, the store is going to be up, well, as soon as these get back from production, sometimes, you know, there's, like, holds and weights and stuff, because you never know how the company is going to, like, because obviously if you're not doing it yourself, you don't have all that equipment. Yeah. You know the company is going to decide when it's done. So they're still in production right now, but the site will be up within a month. And I'll announce it and stuff. Nice. And Stay tuned. On your Instagram, probably? Yep. And you yeah. might see ads on it, because I'm going to run ads on that one. I think that's probably a really good one to run ads. It, it is, yeah. <laughs> I I was doing like some online stuff for quite a while. I still do Ooh. online stuff, so um, yeah, that's definitely the way to do it. What kind of brand do you have? Well, I don't have anything right now, okay. but I was doing some like drop shipping stuff, mm-hmm. and then I'm also mm-hmm. working on kind of my own uh, like fitness style Ooh, like yeah. workout shit almost like a gym shirt kind of yeah but like uh i'm more on that streetwear side of things Ooh. anyway so okay. i just like i like hoodies yeah. and I like not oversized shirts or not anything like too sporty and tight mm-hmm. i just kind of want to wear like stuff that you could wear out or to the gym you know and be like cool like a north face type of vibe? yeah something like, kind of like that okay i guess yeah or yeah, like champion oh, like okay. champion yeah. yeah champion would be a better one Something like That's that. Or like Nike, I guess. So we might have to do a collab. With yeah, future. bro. We coming up with some stuff. That'd be cool. That's so, why I was so interested in the clothing thing. Because okay. I definitely, yeah, I've been doing some stuff around that. What's your go-to product for drop shipping? Ah, uh, dude. Or do you want to spill the beans? I was doing a, um, like a automatic mug for a while. Okay. But. Like a warm-up mug? Uh, yeah, it like stirs your coffee oh. and shit for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that blend jet. Uh-huh. Uh, you've seen that one? Yeah. Yeah, but it's a pretty competitive space, and it's hard, but yeah. you do learn a lot from that type mm-hmm. of thing, even if it wasn't, like, if you don't get super rich off it or whatever, like, yeah. you're not going to get rich overnight or anything. It takes a long time. Have you tried Amazon FBA? I did that uh, over the, f- I used to sell advertising on the phone, okay. and I also used to sell FBAs, like, all the time, yeah, like, marketing for that, yeah. Oh. That was different. That was when I had an advertising agency. I didn't uh, have my own one. Uh-huh. I just sold them. Okay. Yeah. And that went well. So, what are your inspirations? Like your like artist inspirations, like like clothing inspirations, 
type deal? Like, is there anybody in specific that you would say inspired you to be the person you are today? Um, Offset. <laughs> <laughs> that was random. Well, right. he's he's huge in the uh, clothing industry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And music. Uh, for one, like he might be like a controversial figure right now, but. You know, before the controversy, obviously <laughs> Kanye. We get like, that one a lot. Yeah, we hear a that lot. A lot of artists are inspired by Kanye. Yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> he like he he got no filter and stuff, and he, mm-hmm. he kind it kind of makes everyone feel a little bit more comfortable to do what they want mm-hmm. because we can see him, you know, succeed or fail, and not be you know upset about it. Mm-hmm. So it'll inspire us to... Bro, that dude's fucking up all the time, and yeah. he's still successful. <laughs> exactly. So it's a perfect, like... It's a wild cannon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, he's, a, he's a good muse. Um, for music, inspiration, uh, I would say probably, like, Fetty Wap, honestly. Fetty okay. Wap's good for Fetty music, Wap. inspiration. Fires. Um, I got a Glock in my Rari right <laughs> now, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, he do be having some hits. Yeah. Some classics. Dude, he yeah. actually does bangers. Just for, like, the catchy stuff. Like, I kind of use some, uh, some inspiration on some people. Yeah, mm-hmm. baby. Yeah, because he, he, he's 1738. Catchy. Exactly. You, you guys already know. Yeah, so, bro. Like, fire. Um, he, he almost kind of started, like, the era of, like, having your own, like, catchphrases. Yeah. Yeah, him and, like, Chance the Rapper. He does it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Like I never sounds, thought about. Like I didn't think say. about that. Yeah, his yeah. like ad lib like catch. Uh-huh. And now it's like a really common thing. And then probably Lil Wayne Lil for the rap. Weezy. Um, and then Justin Bieber for the singing. Okay. Fire. So. Like, That's a mentioned. hell of a variety. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got a, like an open palette when it comes to music. So like, I mean, in everything too. Yeah. What do you listen to now? Right now, I listen to underground artists. I like underground. I don't like mainstream music. I don't know many people who do, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, who, who are you listening yeah, who to you right listening now? To? Uh, right now, um, for like the wavy kind of stuff, this guy named Highway. Oh, I've um, heard of that. For the for the hype. He's not super underground, obviously, but yeet. Um, for, like, the calm music, um, also not super underground, but I like Tyler, the creator, when it comes to, like, yeah. calm music. I don't like his, like, hype beat music. I was about to say, what calm music? <laughs> <laughs> like the, you made my earthquake? Yeah, it's not oh, super underground, yeah. but, like, yeah, he has a bunch good. of stuff on SoundCloud. I would still, sure. like, classify his style as underground. Yeah. Though. Yeah, he's an underground rapper. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, indie underground. Mm-hmm. Um, for singing, I would say, uh, yeah, underground artists. Like, let me open them up. Yeah, take your time. It, it's yeah. a, it's kind of a hard one. While you're doing that, I was actually uh, talking to Augie about this the other day. Uh-huh. You got somebody that you were looking at, like, or that you found, like, maybe this week or in the past, like, week or two that you were like, oh, this is kind of fire. Like, maybe doesn't have that many like songs a new underground or anything. Artist. I just found one, Neek Bucks. Uh, I'm sure he's, I know I've, he's I've, more popular yeah. than mm-hmm. I know about, but, and he has some, like, pretty good features with some higher artists, you know. Yeah. And I was like, damn, bro, this is fire. And he just dropped a new album, and I checked that out. So check out Neek Books if you're looking for some underground Neek rap. Books. Yeah, no, that that's actually, like, what I'm all about, like, finding the new artists yeah. and then just listening to them. Um, for me, the new artists that I've found recently would probably be, yeah, probably be Highway. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. Yeah, he, he got some good stuff. Highway 2009. We'll probably get flagged if this oh, plays yeah, too yeah, long. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, just like automatic. Yeah, fucking ban hammer bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> Jeez, fuck you, YouTube. Yeah, Highway two thousand nine. I'll check yeah, that out, highway bro. Highway two thousand nine, and then um, yeah. I mean, I kind of keep a consistent playlist because I usually just be listening to my files. Because if I listen to too much music, 
then I, I won't be able to make my own music. You just get like overflowed. I've with actually create. noticed that too. Sorry, go ahead. You just get overflowed with like the other people's creativity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I've noticed that it starts to like bleed into your, like it influences the way that you're, if you're like thinking about like, oh yeah, I'm like feeling hype right now, you know? And then you listen to like a couple of like sad love songs. You're like, maybe I should make a love song. Exactly. And you're like, fuck. That's how it was when I was really like listening to a lot of West Side Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I made bleachers and like, that's when I made palms and stuff like that. Oh, too. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, yeah, he's, this motherfucker is definitely influencing my shit. And then yeah. Joyner Lucas. Yeah. Yeah, and then sometimes you'll accidentally spit the same bars that they spit. And so it's like, and you don't, like, you subconsciously, like, you don't you're like, Oh, this bar's sick. And then you're like, wait, I've heard wait. that somewhere before. Yeah, literally. And, like, oh, and then you have to change and you're like, God damn it, that was such a good line. <laughs> Fuck him for taking that line, bro. You, you ever just, like, <laughs> listen to a song and you're like, damn, this is exactly what I feel right now. Like, I could, I could have wrote this fucking song. Literally, <laughs> I think that's I, like, I could have wrote this. I am writing it like as it's going. Like, literally, no, that I think that's like the reason why I started music because I'm like, wait, that line wasn't right. I'd rewrite it this way. Yeah, dude, that that's a big thing that I uh, I think about a lot in music too. Whenever I'm listening to a song, it's like, oh, dude, you should have said this. Oh, dude, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I'm like, bro, you missed out on the hottest bar. It would have been so like, fire. That would have been so if I good. was there in the studio with you, bro. And I just told you. Like, you just made that a throwaway, and this is the hardest part of the song. Yeah, bro. Oh my God. Yeah, no. Obviously, guys know that same exact thing, but yeah, that's <laughs> that should be happening. <laughs> shit dude all right well i think we get to wrapping up go ahead and tell everybody once again where to uh find you at i am lil nikki p that is l u l n i c k y with the p at the end Big and you p. can find me on instagram youtube tiktok um soundcloud all the apps yeah yeah pushing p and yeah. your clothing brand and my clothing brand Players Club Records or Players Club. Be on the lookout for that online store drop in in the near future. Near future. That is a bet. And we are on the block. The broccoli. The broccoli. The broccoli pie. (laughs) Yes, sir. Yeah. Broccoli. Okay. That's what we're going to make our intro. (laughs) Yeah. That was it. All right. That was it. That was it. it. Thank you. Hey, thanks, bro. Appreciate (laughs) you. Hell yeah. Let's go. All right. Well, we're the Broccoli Pod. I'm Capital J. I'm Augie Dupre. And I'm Lil Nicky P. We out. Peace. I have this be running up, fat like King Kong fingers. Smile and I be sad as shit, but that's not your business. I guess that's too weird, I be losing friends. Money coming in, different color bands. If you a real nigga, then show a hand. You probably feel as weird when you.